Alright, hey guys, welcome back to another video, and today, uh, it's kind of like part two, but not really, but pretty much what we're going to do is we're going to go over a couple of uh, dev replies on the forums, we have uh, three pages worth right over here, and uh, this has to do with this thread, uh, which is the, uh, I kind of went over it, I don't know exactly when I'm going to upload this, probably you've seen part one around, uh, what's it called, a week ago, if you're watching this whenever it does come out. But um, the topic of it was a guy making a thread uh, talking about how they were going kind of slow. The devs replied a couple of times and just kind of gave information of what they were doing. And uh, now we're getting a little bit more information. So uh, let's get right to it. Uh, by the way, it's kind of late. So it's like 5.30 a.m. So if I'm a little bit slow, if I'm a little bit sleepy, it is what it is. All right, boys, let's do it. All right, so first we have a player saying their position on other lords, their stance on the recent future slash castle vote and influencing it and other mechanics present in previous games and not the current one. Okay, so what is he exactly talking about? Uh, oh, okay, okay. So they're talking about uh, immersive things uh, to discuss with lords, like more talking options and stuff of that nature. He's asking, um, you know, the previous games had it, but this one doesn't really have it. So Dev responds and says, as far as I know, some Lords have dialogues about their political opinion and maybe that they can be expanded to cover more of them. Um, he says, albeit uh, the most viable options would be generic dialogues based on their character traits due to sheer volume of Lords. Questions about policies sound interesting, but may be quite misleading as they are subject to uh, possibly they're subject to possible uh, rapid change. It may be better to communicate that as the Lord makes a proposal instead. I get what he's saying. So look, pretty much uh, some Lords do have extra dialogue that you can talk to them about, kind of how they see their po uh, politics and all that, and you can talk to them about it. Um, but I also see the player's point where it would be good to have a lot more of that type of dialogue, regardless, just to have a lot more uh, cool dialogue. See, the thing is, um, how can I explain it? Players like having a lot of different, like, it could be randomly generated, who, it doesn't really matter. You know, it could be, you could make some dialogue based on the traits, you can make some dialogue based on their policies, and just mismatch them. If they, if it always feels like a new, a fresh experience with uh, each lord, even though it's just randomized by certain different words, you know, in the sentence, it just gives the player that immersive feeling that everyone's just a little bit different. You know what I mean? And um, and then you could also sneak in some kind of like little, you know, Easter eggs in some of those conversations or some funny uh, little bits. And then people are gonna play the game. And as they play the game, they're gonna post on Reddit. It's gonna get. A top page on Reddit, like, oh my god, look what I just found. And just cool little stuff like that. It just gives that little oomph to the dialogue. So uh, I think a lot more of that should be added, uh, in my personal opinion. Uh, next we have is, there won't be any more work on dialogues, and that Lord and Companions will be left as the cardboard cutouts with no discernible personalities that they currently are. Okay, so that's what the player said. Dev replies, I find it more likely that Companions will see additional work in this regard. Uh, then Lords, then he said edits to clarify both may of course see some work. I just mean that in my opinion, companions would be more viable in terms of achieving greater discernibility slash uniqueness since their numbers are notably lower. Okay, so he states um, that companions will get more work because their their numbers a little bit lower, so it's a little bit um, easier to kind of make them more, you know, make them stand out more. But um, what I do see in the future, in the future, like future future, is um, especially if modders are listening, I think this would be a very good mod to kind of just, you know, randomize backstories and all this and stuff like that and just give more dialogue to uh, different characters. That would be kind of cool. I don't know exactly how that would be done because that would have to be randomized. It wouldn't be specific characters. But um, I do think the devs should look into that and actually add a lot more because it... Uh, it definitely needs a lot more dialogue in my opinion. And then we have another player asking, still no final decision yet made about the player's ability to use his companions to take over the control over the alleys in town. And Dev replies, no. So there's no final decision. It may or may not, we shall see. Okay. Uh, next we have is one more person saying, 
It has been announced at least a month ago and no news ever since. Have you ran into some trouble or do level designers need time to finish the scenes? I'm guessing this has to do with the um, the new battle train system. And then uh, the developer says, I had shared this in another thread, but basically we're working on the ca combat AI behavior in close quarters. Oh, this I think this has to do with keep battles then. Because um, close quarters, it's a keep battle thing. Okay, so keep battles. So it said they're going to work on combat AI behavior in close quarters. Some scene adjustments, spawns mostly, may also be made, but that's not really a blocker at this point. Okay, so they're just working on combat and stuff of that nature. But yeah, it's still being uh, worked on. Uh, next we have, we have another player saying, each lord having a template, they could have their own, their preferences when it comes to factions and even characters. This would be a great foundation for lore, relationship boosts, uh, along with a potential trigger for quests. This is talking about the dialogue, this player. He said, Mon Chong, he could ask the player to, uh, what's it called, bring them as a prisoner, or they could ask the player to get rid of enemy troublemakers in a nearby city. They are trying to decrease loyalty. Okay, so yeah, stuff like that. Just random stuff, random quests and all that. And the dev says, the quests you describe already exist. Okay. And, uh, or are being worked on as issue quests and are offered to player when they acquire with the lords in dialogue. That is true. A lot of these do already exist. I think the player is just talking about, you know, just anything. More dialogue in any single way. Which I think the devs do understand, but at the same time, you know. You know, I don't I don't know what the I don't know the predicament they're in, so I can't really speak on that. But I do think that more would be better. Uh then we have another one saying, does or does not the campaign last long enough for characters to start losing their hair and go balding? What in the world? Okay, here we go with the jokes. Due to the butter conditioner, no calorie has to go bald. That's crazy. Okay. Missed this before. <laughs> um we have another player asking, did this ever exist before in Bannerlord? If yes, why all of these removed? What is he talking about? Dun, dun, dun. Let's go back real quick. What existed in Bannerlord and what was removed? I think we're talking about this. Uh... Okay, what are we seeing? So this is like from a long time ago. But it's pointing towards this. Well, how the armor is rotating stuff and how you can like place it on him like that. Is that what he's talking about? Okay, let's go back and see what the dev has to say. He says, I don't know. This is a long before my time. This may have been plans and even prototypes, but we clearly don't have those features now. However, this re isn't really true. Okay, I don't know exactly what he's talking about, but okay. Moving on, we have another player saying, nothing as natural or strategical as his e explanation in game really exists. If a clan has one village raided, it really doesn't matter because they can and will just travel to the next village and recruit troops, you know, without consequences. Okay. And Dev responds saying, Radiant Villages does, does have a number of consequences, such as effects on the bound centers, loyalty slash security, as well as the economic food situation. These may not be uh, that simple to see for the player, as they affect, as they take effect over time and compete with other effects that may counteract, that, counteract them, but they are there and can lead to things like starvation or rebellion. Okay, um, so I'm kind of on the fence about this. I get where the player is coming from, where raiding villages isn't that big of a deal, like, at all, really. Um, and it probably should be more of a big deal. And um, But at the same time, I do also get what the dev is saying, that it does have effects, but it just not might not be seen to the player as that big of an effect, because it does take time to take place. And also, if we're being completely honest, you know, raiding, um, what's it called, villages in... Uh, Warband kind of had that kind of same concept where it was kind of a big deal, but not really. Do you know what I'm trying to say? It was kind of like in between. But, uh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they should make it more cons more consequential to, um, you know, if your village is raided. Uh, I'm kind of on the fence about that. 
Alrighty, next page. Alrighty, what else? We got a couple of things from players and developers. So the player says, having mounted captains stay behind infantry or archer groups during the advance and charge commands. Okay, so this is kind of like the placement of captains uh, before the battle starts. Uh, the dev response saying the underlying issue of captains on horses charging or advancing alone ahead of their formation has been brought up internally in a suggestion meeting before it was noted that this is not a desired behavior that we should re uh, resolve it with AI at the moment we already have a system in place which makes troops from the same formation charge together okay I recorded this video on 1.5.10 as an example of this behavior the mountain companion has a speed limit has the speed limit of the on foot uh, tr units in the formation. Okay, what is this? Oh, is that the captain right there with the? Uh... Okay, so that's the captain. He's just going the same way. So he's not really charging. He's going kind of the same way. Okay, so players, I'm guessing it looks like they want them to go first, which I don't, I don't know. This is a more of a formation question. I'll be honest with you. Like you guys know, I'm not that much. Uh, I don't go too crazy with the formations. I'm kind of a basic person when it comes to that. But okay, uh, Dev says, but the system is voided if the cohesion of the uh, formation is lost and they're told to charge. For example, if an individual troop is far from their intended spot in the formation at the time of the charge order due to moving with his formation from point A to point B, then the troop will be considered out of cohesion and not given the speed limits of the formation and as such charge normally. This is not the final AI behavior and we tend to make further improvements to the system. Okay, so what he's saying, um, what I think he's saying, is that if they're out of order or kind of out of place, when the charge order is given, they will not uh, charge together. They will charge kind of like their own separate units, which is something they are trying to improve. Okay. In either case, your suggestion adds on top of the behavior by making the hero stay behind the formation and not in the middle of it. I'll bring it up in the suggestion meeting. Well, there you go. It will be brought up. Again, I'm, I'm not the biggest on formation, so, you know, it is what it is. Alrighty, we have another uh, person saying, I have read in the forums that when you delegate command, a lot more specialized battle tactics are locked behind a tactic skill. Is this true? I've tried to see this for myself by delegating command at 275 uh, tactic versus one and notice text such as horse archers are doing hit and run and archers are shooting behind infantry screen at higher levels. If this is true, can we have tooltips or text added to specific levels or the overall description of the tactic skill? Okay, so he's saying as you upgrade your tactic skill, um, you're going to see more um, better tactics being used by your AI. And uh, the dev says that's correct. Yes, similarly, AI lords employ such tactics if the ground on their side has a high enough tactic skill. I'll bring up the suggestion to add tooltips slash text. Uh, which explains the system further during the next suggestion meeting. Yeah, I think that should be added because I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't even know this was a feature. So, yes, I think more tooltips when it comes to formations should always be added because I'll be honest with you, it's kind of confusing. It's a little bit confusing. And uh, I'd be messing up a lot when it comes to formations. I really do. I got a lot of formation questions here. Okay. Second, related to number one, is there a plan to expand the formations and troop orders to allow the player to use these? I'm very interested in ordering my cavalry to protect the flanks or having my horse archers as skirmishers perform hit and run tactics to bait enemy formations into charging me. Uh, Dev said there are currently no plans to this. I'll bring this up in the next suggestion meeting. Is there any plans to expand the formation and troop orders? Okay, so kind of like uh, I'm guessing uh, make it custom. Which I think it is kind of custom, but I think like kind of just expanding it even more. Okay. Uh, then we have three. Are there plans to include encyclopedia entries about the AI profile slash troop formations, formation types, order types? I feel the systems are much more complex and I learn new things all the time about them. Having a place to read more would be great. Yes, I think that I, I think that's actually pretty good. Again, that'd be actually a very good encyclopedia section where uh, for example, you can see um, what the different formations kind of look like. Like, give us like maybe like a picture 
uh, showing you what the formation looks like, what it's good against, what it's not good against, and stuff like that. I think that would be great for the encyclopedia page. And the dev says, yes, uh, thank you for the suggestions. Yeah, that's, that sounds good. So they're going to bring it up in the next suggestion meeting. Okay. And then we have another one saying, in either case, your suggestion adds on top of the behavior by making the hero stay behind the formation and not in the middle of it. I'll bring it up in the next suggestion meeting. Oh, the, so this was talking about, okay, okay, so this was previously up here where the dev talked about um, the captains, I guess, going first in the formations. And he stated that just to note that this was rejected, we didn't feel it was a good solution since the formation get flanked from sides, in which case he's left defenseless. Okay, there it is. It is what it is. Alrighty, what in the world is this? Okay, so uh, we have a player asking, can you give us an actual tactic number breakdown for new battle tactics unlocked? I'd like to see some research into how many AI Lords have access to what type of tactics tier, and if over time the lower tier AI Lords eventually gain enough skill to unlock the higher tactic orders. Okay, look at this, okay. So the dev, uh, well, it's not the dev, he's the community manager, states, sure, I've discussed it uh, with our mission wizard, Brock, and he has more, he was more than happy to oblige, here's a list, but keep in mind that it can change during EA. Okay. So no skill, no general hero, you have tactic charge, everybody charges, okay? And once you reach a skill level 20, attacking or defending, tactic full scale attack, approach enemy in organized fashion, and engage in melee slash cavalry flanks. Okay, only when attacking, you have the tactic ranged harassment, which is approach to the effective range of our ranged formation and pepper enemy with ranged weapons. Okay, only when defending, you have a tactic defense engagement, which is choose terrain with advantageous slope, with advantageous slope to uh, enemy approach and hold defensive position. Tactic defensive line. Okay. So this looks like a lot of different stuff that you unlock. And then at 50, you also unlock a couple of other things. Very cool. Again, if you want to kind of read more about it, again, this is a lot of formation stuff. I might make a separate video uh, once I've kind of read this through and kind of understand it a little bit more. Maybe even make a little uh, kind of show off video for it. But like always, link will be down below. It is on the screen now if you uh, want to pause it. But uh, very cool for them to show this. And hopefully they do add this to the encyclopedia. I think this would be very, very good. Uh, addition to that encyclopedia but uh that will do it for me some good information and uh yeah like always stay safe